Boy, this sure looks good. It is good. <laughs> I already tried it. I know it's good. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another tune chat. Hello. Justine and Ron. That's right. And today's my birthday. Today is Ron's birthday. So I don't know when this video is going out, but on August 21st, that is Ron's birthday. Yep. And then September 21st is my birthday. One month away. <laughs> so we're exactly one month apart. I know this isn't stereotypical birthday food, but it's just what we had. And we found this receipt and we really wanted to show you mm -hmm. guys. So let's dig in. We got meat, we got potatoes, and we got something that kind of resembles modern ketchup. It's pretty close. It's pretty close. Okay, birthday boy, let me go serve <laughs> you. <laughs> And these are uh, mm -hmm. pork loin that we have cut up and beat mm -hmm. with a... We pounded it. Yeah, with your rolling pen. That's right, with my rolling pen. If you'd like to see this meal being prepared, please mm -hmm. go to Early American to watch Justine yes. make all this. I know everybody, there, there's mm -hmm. always people in the comments say, well, where did she make it at? How do I see it? What's the recipe? Go to, this, Early, go to Early American yeah, and it, watch it. It's the same channel every time. <laughs> yeah. Over there we cook it. And here we eat it. Over here we eat it. You want potatoes, don't you? Yes, please. Like half of them. I could just make a <laughs> meal out of fried potatoes. That's good, thank you. And I'll have the rest, thank you. <laughs> still your fork, you stole my fork. No, I'm serving, that's why. I was serving with yeah. your fork. Give my it. fork back. Do we have any mushroom ketchup anywhere? Uh, no. There it is. Oh! Bombshell. I should have known. I mean, come on. Of course we had mushroom cats up around. <laughs> but is it full or empty? Okay, so that brings me to another thing. We have two different types of cats up on this table right now. We do. We have mushroom cats up. Made from mushrooms. And then we have, in the receipt it says it's tomato sauce that you're supposed to eat with meat. But it has vinegar in it. So, by modern standards, this is ketchup. Yes. You know, back then they... The whole concept of a tomato-based ketchup as food wasn't really a thing yet. But this, for Pete's sake, this is just ketchup. I mean, by, by modern standards, you know, maybe it's a little bit more liquidy than modern ketchup. But tomato sauce does not have vinegar in it. Ketchup has vinegar in mm -hmm. it. So this is one of the earliest ketchup, tomato-based ketchup recipes that I could find. Yeah. One of the earliest. There's a few more within 10, 20 years or so, but this one looked real easy to make, so I went with it. Oh, yeah. my turn or your turn to say grace today? Uh, I can do it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Lord, thank you for this food we're about to eat today. Thank you for Ron. Thank you for his longevity, and I hope he lives a hundred more years of happiness and health. Thank you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> thank you. I'll be 134 years old then. That's right. <laughs> That's old. <laughs> All right, well. I'm not big he just put mushroom cats up on. You don't even want to try this? Is what well, I mean. I put it on my meat. Oh, okay. So here, I'll put this on my taters. You know, the receipt says to apply it on your meat. Well, there we go. <laughs> you want some? Yeah. On the meat or the side? On the side so I can eat it with everything. I'm going to try this how it's telling me to, which is with meat. Mm. It didn't say what meat. <laughs> of course it never does. It just says serve with meat. It said hot or cold meat, so you could serve with cold roast beef or cold roast chicken if you wanted to. I'm thirsty. Um, so I'm going to, I chose pork. Let's see. Well. It works. It's fine. Don't worry, mm -hmm. these modern pewter plates, they mm -hmm. don't have lead in them anymore. Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of people thought that they were poisonous, because a few random people died mm -hmm. way back then, whenever the acid from the tomatoes leached out into the uh, pewter they used back then. It had mm -hmm. lead in it, and mm -hmm. the lead would leach out, mm -hmm. and you get lead poisoning and die. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the reasons why people stayed away from it. And they might not have known that it leached out, but that's our conclusion today, is uh, that's what happened. Right. And tomatoes are from here. They're from the Americas. Mm -hmm. They've been around since about 700 AD. The Aztecs mm -hmm. had them, and they were yellow and orange back then. 
I still have yellow tomatoes growing in my garden. Yeah, we still have yellow and orange tomatoes today. I love yellow tomatoes. But supposedly there was no red tomatoes until they started crossbreeding and uh, developed red. I did not know that. This is good, actually. On the fries, mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah, this isn't bad. I honestly don't even need the meat. I'm in a just eat potato mood. I'm gonna eat everything mood. That's fair. <laughs> If there was no ketchup back then, this is the best thing to it. If I traveled back in time and I was craving ketchup, that's close enough. <laughs> it's just not as thick. Mm -hmm. It's almost yeah. like a marinara. Marinara. Mm -hmm. Marinara? Marinara. Marinara. Mm -hmm. It was a hard Pizza one to sauce. say. Especially when your mouth is full. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're right, it's kind of, it is kind of like pizza sauce. The only weird thing about it is it has ginger in it. I don't taste the ginger. Oh, yeah. But I don't recall modern uh, ketchup re recipes calling for ginger. Hmm. Hmm. So that's kind of what makes it weird. Another thing that makes it weird is modern ketchup recipes, you're supposed to cook the tomatoes slowly in a stew pan until the water naturally evaporates. Mm -hmm. This doesn't say to do that, because I don't think they actually wanted it to be a pasty kind of sauce. They wanted it to be more, I don't know, just flowing. Liquid. <laughs> yeah, just more liquid. But at the same time, you have to drain the excess water. You know, a lot of these receipts are really vague very very vague they're often only one or two sentences so you have to just kind of interpret using common sense and prior knowledge about historic cookery from other receipts mm -hmm. what they wanted you to do and they definitely want you to drain off the water from it um because they, they don't want you to just put tomato water on meat it has to be a sauce right <laughs> right so it didn't say to do that in the receipt but it's implied that you're supposed to do that so when i was pounding it out with the the pestle and whenever there was too much water in there i would have to scoop it up with my hand and drain off the extra water until i got to this it's a sauce now yeah that's really good oh i'm glad you like it so tomatoes make their way to europe mm -hmm. in the 16th century the conquistadors they bring it back with them and right off the bat it's called the love apple uh, everybody mm -hmm. loves it. And then, like mm -hmm. I said earlier, uh, there are a few accounts of it leaching out into the pewter plates and uh, making the lead leach out. Because mm -hmm. the got, acid in it? Yeah, and it got people sick and they died, so then it became known as the poison apple. <laughs> right. <laughs> but uh, that that was uh, one of the first vegetables to come back to Europe from the Americas. It's a fruit! Fruit, sorry. <laughs> Can you imagine Italian food without tomatoes? No. Because tomatoes are a Native American crop. They're not native to Europe. You know, so all, all of these foods that we now take for granted and we think, oh yeah, that's been a part of our culture since before Jesus was born. In actuality, a lot of these foods are no older than most American foods are. Hmm. So chilies are native to um, the Americas. Yeah. Can you imagine Korean food without chilies? <laughs> You know, that, that goes like half of their food's gone. <laughs> or it's like Italian food without tomatoes. Half of their food's gone, you know? So food has changed a lot. And you can say confidently, yeah, my great, 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 great grandpa was probably eating this, but no, he wasn't, you know? Because food has immigrated, immigrated around the world. Mm -hmm. So some things just weren't there. 200, 300 years ago. How about the cannibalism thing? Yeah, I was, I got my notes here. My okay. cheat sheet. Uh, <clears throat> can't pronounce his name. Don't say his name then. Okay. Say he's a Spanish. He's a conquistador. conquistador. His last name is Diaz. He might be related to Cameron, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, he <clears throat> was in charge whenever they were uh, exploring the new lands. Hmm. 
back in the 16th century, and he said that the Aztecs had pots of tomatoes boiling with onions and salt and peppers mm. ready to kill us and eat our flesh. So they would eat you with tomatoes. Well, yeah. at least they had good taste. Yeah. <laughs> no. They had good no. taste. But clearly he survived to tell the tale. Oh, yeah. Somehow he got out of that. <laughs> I like it with the meat, but I'm just in a potato mood. They like better with the potatoes. Hmm. Right. The meat, you can't, meet them. You can't beat the mushroom ketchup. Mm -hmm. Thank you everybody who watched the little video I did the other day on Switzel. Mm. That's what I'm drinking today, it's really good. I'm waiting for you to force me to drink that. Here you go, try some. No! <laughs> it's really good. It's not overly sour with vinegar. Mm. And I put less ginger in it today because it was a little hot the other day. I'm terrified of Switzel. Just sip it. Um, okay, I'm terrified of Switzel because every... Whenever people make it, 90% of the time they add too much vinegar. I didn't. <laughs> and it's just vile. It's like drinking vinegar. Why would you want to just drink vinegar? I mean, I, I know some people do for health reasons. I love vinegar flavored foods, but I can't, you know? But Ron's telling me he didn't add a lot of vinegar, but still there's this mental block. I put extra maple syrup in it too. Okay. I'm just a little traumatized by my past experiences with Switchel. Fair enough. Let me first give it the sniff test. Really? <laughs> it smells like vinegar and ginger. Just try it, please. I will. But... It's my birthday. Oh. It's my birthday <sighs> present. Don't say I don't love you. Look at what I do for you. No back work. Well. Hmm. I'm confused because it's actually good. It shouldn't be good. It's switching. Do you really like it? Yeah, it's not bad. I don't taste vinegar, but I smell vinegar, so I'm like so confused. It works in coronation with the ginger and the hmm. maple syrup and the water. A good thing I got a whole picture here. <laughs> Yeah, how come it, it's I, good? How come I smell vinegar, but I don't taste vinegar? I just taste like a, I basically taste a flat ginger ale. There, it's not carbonated. Mm -hmm. It's good. It's Thank pretty you. good. Thank you. <laughs> okay, that's the best switch I've ever had, actually. Thank you. You know what makes it the best? The fact that it's edible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. Hmm. Good job, Ron. Thank you. Good job on this meal. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to talk about french fries a little bit, though. Thomas Jefferson. Mm. You all can thank our third president, Thomas Jefferson, for the french fry. Mm. When he was a diplomat over in Europe, before he was president, he ate french fries, which they called fried potato back then. Mm. But he brought it back to America, and he brought back a lot of things. The macaroni. Yeah. Uh... French fries. Parmesan? Parmesan. It, he's, he's got a lot of really cool yeah. stuff. But anyways. This is in the 18th century, <laughs> by the way. Yeah. But in mm -hmm. the 19th century, mm -hmm. 1802, when he was in the White House, mm -hmm. he served French fries one evening. And everybody raved about it. <laughs> and it, it kind of stuck. It, it spread like wildfire. And then, you know, we got French fries today. So where did fried potatoes come from? But, let's back up. Even farther... In Belgium, let me look at my cheat sheet here. I have written down here, that's the wrong side, my other side. I have written down here. <laughs> I can't read my own writing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, the 17th mm -hmm. century in Belgium mm -hmm. is where this shape the of, long, of, skinny of shape. fried potato comes from, french fries. What century? The 17th century. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. The, in the 1600s in Belgium, the waters froze in the wintertime, and the people there like to eat these small fish that I did, don't remember the name of, but anyways, mm. they could not fish for them because the water was frozen, so mm. they cut up potatoes and fried them instead, 
So I guess it was mm. little fish like this. Mm. And so they cut potatoes that looked like it and fried it and it stuck. And mm. so that's the very beginning I of the fry. But if you Google when were French fries invented, it'll probably say much more recently. St. Louis World's Fair. Because the word French fry is modern. But this is not modern. <laughs> this is just a fried potato that's in a long yeah. shape. You know, it's a French fry by modern standards. The name is a French fry, but back then they just called it fried potatoes. Yeah. Just fried potatoes. So fried potatoes that have been cut in a long French fry-like shape have been around since the 17th century. That's right. And potatoes are also native to the Americas. But they were brought over to Europe where eventually it caught on and it went crazy, became super, super popular. Especially once we get towards the later 18th century, super, super popular. Mm -hmm. And then this dish came back over to America where potatoes were native to anyway. Mm-hmm. So what is the most patriotic meal then? Potatoes. Mm-hmm. Macaroni. Well, no. What's native to America? Oh, oh what, what was your question? So what is the most patriotic meal? Oh. Potatoes. potatoes. They're native to the Americas. Tomatoes are oh. native to the Americas. And? That's it. Oh. I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> French fries and ketchup. <laughs> I can get down with that. Yeah, I can get down with that. I'm not a I have one. Yeah. Thank you. It's your birthday. You can have five. Two. Three. Four. Five foot. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> hmm. That might run. Yeah, it's pretty dark out. <laughs> And then it says when you're done making the sauce, you're supposed to store it in a jar, which really makes me think like ketchup. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you say? It lasts about a week. Keep um, it in a cool place. Yeah, if this cork is on there pretty tight, it could probably last you a week. Probably could. You know, if it was like a tomato sauce by modern standards, in a receipt book, they probably would have wanted you to serve it right away with a, another dish. So they wouldn't have told you how to cork it up. But the fact that they say to put it in a jar makes me think that it's supposed to just be eaten a little bit at a time. Hmm. Instead of all at once in a meal. You know? That makes sense. Yeah. Because back then they very rarely ever said how to keep it. So it's really unusual that they said that. Hmm. Very unusual. <clears throat> well, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, hmm. but this past week hmm. we lost a good friend. Uh, his name is Paul Petras. He's an hmm. older gentleman that was in one of our videos, hmm. and I've known for about three, four years now. Uh, really, very kind hmm. guy, kindest guy you ever right. meet. Full of uh, wisdom and knowledge. And uh, he took a fall about two weeks ago, and he was in the coma, and mm -hmm. he wasn't getting oxygen to his brain, and the family made a decision uh, about three days ago to pull him off of life support. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> so anyways, uh, if y'all want to say a prayer for Paul's family, they could use a prayer. His wife was in the hospital before he even went in the hospital, so that family could use some prayers. And uh, <clears throat> anyways, Paul was a great mm -hmm. guy. Yep. He was in our video where Ron met his dad. Mm -hmm. He was the one who was wielding a hatchet. Yeah. <laughs> and Paul made a lot of stuff for us. Mm -hmm. We don't have a lot of it in here. It's... We have it in a more safe place. Yeah. He made but, little, little boss of yeah. and groove. He was a very good carpenter. Very. He's a fine woodworker. Mm -hmm. He made a biscuit mm -hmm. cutter. He made plates out of yeah. wood. I see the biscuit cutter. Let me get it. I don't have any of his carvings, but he was an exceptional carver. So he made us this biscuit cutter. He made us just a whole bunch of things. Yeah. Yeah. He was a Boy Scout. Um, 
he wasn't the troop leader, but he he always talked about going with the Boy Scouts, and he was one of the uh, I don't know what you'd call it, but he had a lot to do with the voice with his local Boy Scout mm -hmm. troop, and a lot to do with his historic troop. He was a veteran. He was in the Vietnam War. Mm -hmm. uh, just a really great guy. Yep. So he's going to be buried at a veteran-only cemetery. At Jefferson Barracks. Right. Everybody knew Paul, uh, whether you go to a French and Indian mm -hmm. War thing or War of 1812 or a Mountain Man thing. He, uh, he, he knew everybody, <clears throat> whether you're British or American, whatever side, everybody knew who Paul was. Right, and he's very down to earth. Mm -hmm. I mean, you meet him for the first time and he just talked to you like he's already been friends with you for years. Oh, yeah. I love people like that. And I try to be like that with people because that's what I like when people are like that. <laughs> and Paul is like that. Mm -hmm. And he would always cook for everybody at all these reenactments. Oh, yeah. Lots yeah. of food. You you wouldn't mm -hmm. even have to bring, we'd always bring food because, you know, you're supposed to be prepared. But uh, when you get there, I'd be making food and he'd say, hey, come on over. And I got food right here, Paul. And he, yeah, he'd make us <laughs> well, cake. Well, come on over afterwards. And he'd put a plate of it in front of you. And Yeah, he was really good at making chili. Bread. He did it way mm. I've never seen before. He'd, he'd do it in his Dutch oven. Then he'd pour his cornbread stuff on top and stick it back in the, mm. the, uh, the mud oven. And the cornbread would cook on top of the chili. So when you go get a scoop, you got a scoop of cornbread, like a layer, and then the chili underneath. And it was pretty cool. Genius. And... Uh, <laughs> The, the first time I met Paul, it was nine degrees out, it was old mines, and I was freezing my butt off. It was the first time mm -hmm. I uh, stayed overnight at an event, because, uh, you know, tents and stuff are very expensive, and I finally got one, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it was, when I met him, like Justine said, it, it, you talked to him as if you knew him all like, your whole life. Right. So. Yep. Uh, He's a friend before you even meet him. He's already your friend. Yeah. Anytime yeah. he call me. We'd be on the phone for almost an hour or mm -hmm. over an hour. Right. Just talk about whatever whatever project mm -hmm. he was working on with wood. Just like I said, he, he was a fine woodworker. He did fine woodworking. Mm -hmm. And uh, he gave me a couple pointers. So I just wish he'd be around a little longer. Mm -hmm. Give me some more pointers. Right. We were always super appreciative whenever he would come to an event. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he just lightened up the whole mood wherever he went. Yeah. So I can't even talk about him like his past tense. You know, no. I feel like he's still here. <laughs> but life and death, it, you know, my mom says we're all on a train and everyone has their stop. And that was just Paul's stop. Mm -hmm. So he went back home to the Lord. Yeah. But it's, I don't know, it's just so mm -hmm. weird for me mentally to grasp that one moment you're talking to somebody and then the next moment you'll never see them again. Mm hmm. You know, it's, it's a strange concept. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're going to we're gonna miss Paul so much. And thank you everyone who's watched the video mm -hmm. of Ron going to Old Mines, meeting his yeah. dad. You could see him in that video. And yeah, that's like a mm -hmm. couple months old. It's been up. And he had some energy. Oh yeah, for, for an old Oh fellow. my gosh, he had some energy. <laughs> he, he was a cancer survivor, mm -hmm. an open art surgery survivor right. and I think his cancer actually came back for a second time survived mm -hmm. that and so you just hate to see him go out with just from a fall but and even then even you know when he was suffering with all this stuff he'd still hike up a mountain with like all this reenacting gear on his back yeah. and he would ask him hey can I help you carry that he'd say no I'm okay I remember he, oh, would, yeah, yeah. he would always say, no, I'll get there. It's just a matter of I'll be a little slower than you guys, but I'll get up there. So he is definitely my role model when it comes to that. Because if Paul could be physically like that and he never gave up ever, I can do that too. Mm -hmm. You know. So we're going to miss him dearly. He was our friend. You guys are our friends, too. Mm -hmm. And you're all very special to us. So, yeah, that's our sad news. <laughs> yeah, that's sad news. Yeah. There's some happy news. Um, mm -hmm. In a couple of weeks, we're having an event here in St. Genevieve mm -hmm. at the Bold Duke mm -hmm. House. We're having the St. Gen Militia Encampment mm -hmm. Rendezvous, whichever you like to call it. And uh, it's open to the public, mm -hmm. and it's free. And you can see us and other reenactors will be set up, we'll be cooking, we'll be mm -hmm. doing uh, demonstrations from tomahawk to musket. Uh, 
trading some things, just your, your kind yeah. of general stuff. It'll be a small thing. It's just St. Jen. It, it's but... a small thing, but it's, mm -hmm. it's a good, if you want to see some uh, neat stuff, it's a good one to go to. Mm -hmm. it's, you don't get distracted from, you know, 100,000 people or something like that. Right. Uh, and I was apparently enlisted to cook. For 30 people. For 30 <laughs> people. <laughs> I did not know this. Of course it's unpaid, you know, it's just doing it as a friendly favor. But, uh, I was enlisted to cook for basically a militia. And so I have a whole menu planned out. There's going to be, um, uh, stewed tomatoes and sausages, turnip greens with pork. There's going to be deer pie. And don't ask me to make anything more than that. What's <laughs> for dessert? I Ice cream. Mmm. <laughs> I'm leaving. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know yet what's for dessert. I didn't even think about that. I think my dad's gonna come. Maybe we can mm. put him in charge of making a dessert. He okay. Can, he can make a blackberry pie or something. Okay. You know how he likes to do pies. Okay. Speaking of your dad, oh, for, yeah. for uh, Ron's birthday, he made him a fork. Yeah. So Ron's dad made him this fork. He forged out a meat fork. He did. And it says R R R on it. That is his initials. He stamped it on it. That's actually, I am the third. So it's my grandfather, my dad, and mine initials were all Ronald Richard Rayfield, but there's senior, junior, and I'm the third. So that's kind of, what are you doing back there? Practicing. Practicing what? What'd she do? Well, now that Paul's away and he was the most badass person on the frontier, somebody has to protect everybody out here. And that's you? It's, it's be, gotta be it's me! Be, it's supposed to be me! It's gotta be me! <laughs> so that's what he got for his birthday. And then something else that he got for his birthday. I also got this uh, Woodcutter 5000 thing. Yes. That it, makes Kenlin. It's really cool, actually. It is not period correct, <laughs> technically. Oh, okay. I'm sure that back then they had something like that, but this is just a birthday gift I got for Ron. It's, it's, it's for our convenience. It's a Kindling cutter. It's yep. made 100% out of cast iron, and so it has a really sharp knife inside of it. It's mm -hmm. all made out of cast iron. You put a piece of wood in there, you take a sledgehammer, and you just pound it down in there, and it makes the wood split in between the knife. So it's much easier to cut wood that way than it is to cut it with a little tiny axe. It's a nice gift. Mm -hmm. So you can cut a big piece of wood into little tiny pieces of wood like this. Yeah, and you can even put them on there and do it again if you really want to. Right. So if anyone's watching this who is a homesteader or they use wood frequently, mm -hmm. Yeah, nobody. That was a good. Nobody likes cutting kindling. Gift. It's right. It's a pain in the butt, mm -hmm. and your wood always falls over, especially the smaller pieces you get. So for uh, for what we do here at the cabin, it yeah. works out great because we use a lot of it. It cuts this big piece into a whole bunch of these with just one or two shoves of a sledgehammer. Yep. And it didn't cost too, too much money. Plus, I think it's going to last us forever. It should. Yeah, there's no mechanical parts to it. It's 100% cast iron. <clears throat> it don't require gasoline. It's just one of those things, you know? Just a piece of iron. <laughs> <laughs> also, I want to say thank you to everybody who came out last week to the Jurt Fet mm -hmm. here in St. Genevieve. Uh, we had a couple drive all the way from Houston, Texas. Yes. And uh, that was really cool. We had another lady. Mm -hmm. Um, really nice lady came from Indianapolis mm -hmm. or Indiana, I should say. I forget what town she's from. She mm -hmm. she brought us a bourbon or something like that. She said she said she planned on buying a bunch of stuff, and I unfortunately had to tell her that everything we had was for display. Uh, so we let her take a few small things, mm -hmm. but she was yeah. really nice. And then there was another couple. I forget where they were from. But well, they're, they're going to Norway. Yeah, they were moving. To oh Europe. no, Belgium. Belgium. Yeah, they're yeah. going to Belgium. They're going where the French fries originated in uh, <laughs> 1680. Belgium. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, a lot of people in Belgium, they speak French, so maybe that's why they call them French fries. Maybe. <laughs> but anyways, maybe. it was a really good event. A lot of people came, mm -hmm. came to it, and uh, we had a good weekend. Yeah, we had a very good weekend. Weather was decent. It was. It was, it, it was a very good weekend. 
San Jersey Fet, for anyone who don't remember, it's a big trade show that they do every single year. It's always the second mm -hmm. fullest weekend in August. Yep, it's in downtown St. Genevieve. They close off the street. Mm -hmm. People literally just have tents um, on, the, on the street selling their wares, you know, whatever they make. And we were there. Ron was selling his handmade furniture, his little boxes that he makes, as well as really big pieces. Um, mm -hmm. And then Candy was there, too. That's the first time she's been there. Yep. And she said, why haven't I done this before? Because she did great, and she met a lot of people, and she had a very good time. Mm -hmm. And she was just sell and selling some of her things from her shop that was literally only three houses up the road. Well, I guess we're going to get off here now, guys. Yep. We got some dishes to do, and it looks like rain is probably moving in. It's a little, little dark out there. Right. So. Plus, come on, relax a little bit. It's your birthday. Yeah. <laughs> I want ice cream. <laughs> Okay, I'll make you ice cream. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'll make you some ice cream because I love you. Hey, I got I can mm -hmm. eat all the ice cream and milk I want because I'm drinking ginger. That's right. There's ginger in this drink, and it works real good. And okay, Ron's lactose intolerant. Hey, what about Switzerland ice cream? So basically, yeah, just hey. ice cream with ginger, honey, and let's, vinegar. Let's splash of vinegar. Yeah. You said you liked it. What if it's uh, ice cream? <laughs> You're pushing it around, you're pushing it. I don't know. All right, everybody. Mm. Thank you very much for yeah. watching. We deeply appreciate it, and we'll see you next week. Take care, guys. We love you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.